But every couple of weeks, we take a look at some of the uh, things that are happening in the world of education. Of course, we're well into the school near, out, near year now, into February 2021, and our Professor of Education, John Fischetti, is in today to talk about some of the, I guess, the new course ideas that are being floated around. And John, some of these actually look pretty good. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Mark. Yeah, Minister Mitchell, the Education Minister for New South Wales, unveiled a really exciting project. So starting next year building toward that this year. Year 11 and 12 students will have an array of new online courses that they'll be able to take from. And listen to these topics, Mark. Big data, entrepreneurship, cybersecurity, game design, real estate, social media, allied health, um, horticulture, automotive technology, age care, health administration. And there's 20 of these mm. that are going to be packaged and delivered to schools through the online portals that they'll be creating. Mm. Now, hang on a minute. This actually sounds to me like what we've kind of been talking about every second time you were here, and that's aiming education and aiming our learning at the jobs of the, not only the jobs of the future, but the jobs of the now. And if we were talking a year ago today, pre-COVID, about the department running online courses, you'd go, wait a second, is that really the best way to do it? And I think we're already over that. These will be developed in a sophisticated sophisticated portal that'll make the learning engaging like some of the best websites in the world are. They'll have multiple applications, not just text-based. But primarily, this is to provide access to sophisticated courses for rural and remote students across the state that don't, that schools don't have the teacher capacity to really put on these kind of courses. That's really exciting because in many of those places, the teaching staff is is what it is. It's fantastic, but they don't have the expertise in some of these areas. Uh, the other thing we need is a decent uh, internet in some of those areas. Different discussion, I know, but I think generally, John, we're, we're there in that everything we do pretty much is is uh, happens in the online environment anyway. Um, so this is really, even by the, the facilitation of such courses as these, uh, it's just a chance to build those skills that are already happening anyway, and, and again, yep. at where the kids are at. And most of the jobs of the future involved big data, online, virtual interactions, hopefully lots of face-to-face -face as well. Mm. So this is actually preparing them to be a learner in that environment with courses deliberately built for that. There are some um, of these topics which do lend themselves to face-to-face, -to -face, and most of the assessment tasks will require doing something applied in their home or in their community. So it isn't as if you're going to be able to do horticulture online. You'll do mm. the text component mm. and the interactions for some of the videos and expertise, but you're still going to have to probably get out in the garden and do something. Well, you would think so. All right, John, that all sounds pretty good. Are there some potential downsides or a couple of boxes we need to check over on the other side here? Well, this is mapped to the ATAR and the HSC, which is good. But on the downside, Mark, you said it just a couple of minutes ago, 25% of Australian families don't have internet access at home. Mm. So at school, they'll likely have it, but the, you can see a gap dividing between those that do and don't. And in those that do have that internet access, the NBN has not been Australia's finest rollout of a scheme. And in many places, it's still slow and clunky, particularly in rural areas, which is designed for. So that's part A. Will the kids that need it the most really have access? That has to come along with this or it's going to be a dud. The second piece is that some of the online portals that are out there, you may have noticed, but if you have any uh, of friends or family members with disabilities, visual impairments, hearing disabilities, or any other physical aspect of that they might not be able to interact the same way many people do, uh, then are they going to be adjusted for that? Because if you provide it online, you have to provide the equal access. That's going to be tricky for kids in a wheelchair that might not be able to access in certain respects some of the activities. It's going to be difficult for kids who are blind or visually impaired uh, to be able to do some of the things. So they'll have to take that on board, or you'll start to see the advantage get advantage by this really good scheme. Yeah, if you've uh, got fast internet uh, and you've got all the, you know, all that bits and pieces, you're fine. I suppose it, it's it's kind of a new way of saying, I, I can recall back in the school days, John, where we didn't have the internet and, and iPads in every classroom and all the rest of it, and yeah. the teacher would give an assignment on whatever it was, I don't know, world peace or whatever, um, or the, the bears in you know, Russia, and you'd have to go down to the library. And if you weren't there to get that yeah. one book in all of town that actually covered all of that... You had to, you just, your assignment wasn't getting done. Yeah, or the B for in the Britannica encyclopedia was it's missing. Gone. So some of the kids swiped it last year. So, oh no, how do I do this? And they did not care if they brought yeah. it back on time. They were finishing that assignment. Yeah. But again, new uh, new technology brings us new challenges, but it also seems to be bringing some new ways of studying. Yeah, Sounds the pretty good. The diversity of this curriculum is interesting. And I think what most kids want now is make it interesting, teacher, and we'll stay with you. This is some good stuff. Mm. All right. Sounds pretty good. John, we'll catch you in a fortnight. Thank you very Thanks, much, as Mark. always. Our 
Professor of Education. There he is, John Fischetti at 2NURFM 103.7. 2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.